Welcome to another Fast Tech video. Before we start, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to remove the IHS on a PlayStation 3. The PS3 we're gonna be using in our demonstration today is a CECH A01 backwards compatible PS3. Steps I'm gonna show you today will also work with PS3 Slim and Super Slim systems as well. You're gonna need our FastTech IHS removal kit, which is a toolkit that easily removes the IHS on PlayStation 3 systems. Links for that are gonna be in the description box and the top comment. Let's get started. We're gonna start off with the RSX, which has these four points that are glued on, as seen in this video clip here where I've removed the IHS already. You're gonna need a heat gun, which you can buy at fasttechstore.com, links in the description box. You wanna set the heat gun to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius, and just heat the corners of the chip as I'm heating them up in this video. Get them nice and warm. You wanna soften the glue so then we're easily able to pry it off with our toolkit. First do it for a minute. If that doesn't work, then give it another two minutes. All right. So I believe I've heated it up enough. You can turn my heat gun off. And now I'm gonna grab my flathead, which I've bent slightly at an angle. And then we're gonna grab a piece of cardboard and we're gonna stick it between the substrate and the IHS so in between the two plates and you want to push it in as much as you can now we're gonna grab the board we're gonna stick our flathead in between the substrate and the RSX all right and now we just want to lift there you go off it comes, easy. Our RSX IHS is off. We wanna clean the remaining paste off the sides because I can feel that it's, there's so much paste on this thing. But as you can see, the paste underneath, it doesn't even exist. There's no paste underneath. Look at the IHS. It's mostly sticking to the IHS, but there's like none on the chip which is a clear cut example of paste that needs to be replaced. This is bone dry. I don't normally like to touch paste, but just to give you, just to get an idea. Yeah, it's completely bone dry. It comes off like powder. So we're going to wipe this off with isopropyl alcohol again. Get that chip shiny. You should clean the chip till the surface is shiny as seen here. Should be able to see reflections in it. As you can see, this is the only side we could have gone in from and there's no damage on the substrate. That's what we want. We want a clean, nice looking substrate, no damage on that. We also want to clean the thermal paste from the IHS, which is in the middle. You can also use the blade from our kit to trim off the glue from the sides. If you don't want to do it on, on the RAM chips, I don't recommend you guys try to do that because you're gonna end up damaging your chip. But definitely do it off the IHS. This is just a piece of metal. You can't screw this up. We'll get to that later, but now I'm gonna show you the difficult part, which is removing the cell. Now, this is gonna be tricky because the glue runs around and it's a different kind of glue than this. It's some kind of a silicone material. We're gonna need the razor blade from our kit for this one. And if you're not nervous already, you should be, because this is not easy. If you mess this up, you will destroy your system. The RSX can be replaced if you send it to us, we, we know how to do that. But the cell, because it has two or three other, two chips, I believe, that are paired to it, it's a completely different ball game. So if you screw this up, your PS3 is done. You have been warned. 
You're gonna grab the razor blade from our Fast Tech IHS removal kit, and we're gonna stick the blade between the substrate and the IHS. I like to start on the corner. You see where my blade is going? In between those two, not under the chip. You don't wanna go for the solder, yeah? I'll show it to you one more time. This is where it's going, right here, okay? And while I'm doing this, I wanna be mindful that there's small components on the motherboard that I don't wanna mess up. Push the blade in. At the same time, I'm looking at the corners of the blade to make sure that it's not touching the surface of the motherboard. See the blade going in further and further, which is what we want. All right, that's about enough. I'm gonna take it back out. You don't wanna push it in too much. And I can see some of the glue coming off on the blade, which is a good sign. Now let's go from this corner. Same time, looking at this side here, wanna make sure that there's enough clearance. There you go, like that. And now let's try to go on this corner here, the glue only goes all the way here and we want to not scratch the NEC tokens so be careful about that this is the trickiest corner because there's very small components here so that's the corner I like to go in and the end okay let's go from this side now Push the blade in. Boom. Like this, and then Make sure we cut it all the way through like this. Now I'm gonna push it all the way, not too much. Round here, I think. You might feel the blade stuck in there, but don't use too much force trying to get it out. Again, take your time with it. It's much more difficult to F this up <clears throat> if you take your time with it. It's easy to F it up if you try to rush it. So, patience is key here. Especially when working on a valuable board like an AO1. Well, if we have to lift up the blade now to get it out. Now let's go on this side here. It's giving me some trouble, so let's try to go in from this corner first. So as I mentioned earlier, it's it's always easier. It's always easier to go in from the corner. You see? Much, much easier. We can corner a little up. Like that. 
and now that we've worked that corner it's going to be easier to go in from this side again I'm very very mindful that there are sensitive components around okay, now let's go in from this side here we're gonna press the bottom we're gonna press the bottom side of the blade in first because we know that sides already softened up so we've cut through it I think this should do the trick boom I think that should do it I think that should have done it. Let's push it in a little bit more in the top. Okay, boom. Now let's go from the top. There you go. Now we can run our blade through. I can feel it moving. It wants to come off now. Just a little bit more love. There you go. And off, off it comes. <laughs> there is no thermal paste. None whatsoever on the chip. This is completely clean. <laughs> this is amazing all of it is on the IHS but none of it is on the chip nothing it's just some oily substance so it must have just evaporated off right off the chip it's crazy bad design from Sony it shouldn't have been this hard for people to uh, replace the actual thermal paste which hides underneath so just to give you an idea this is completely dry bone dry we're going to use isopropyl alcohol to clean this off available at fasttechstore.com go ahead clean that garbage paste off and i would understand if they were using some high quality thermal paste that lasted 20 years but this is bs thermal paste let's get it off the well what <laughs> i don't even know if i needed to wipe off the processor to be honest there's nothing on there really so let's wipe that off let's give the rsx another clean shine so now that we've got the surface clean and shiny well this one was already shiny pretty much but you you get what i'm saying we're going to remove some of the glue off the cell ihs because this is gonna make sure that the chip is actually making good contact with the IHS because this is now just going to get in the way it's not actually holding anything on so we're just going to use our blade from our fast tech IHS removal kit and as I said I've done my research I, I know exactly what tools you're going to need so this blade has many many functions as you can see not just removing the cell IHS. With the IHS removed, now we can install thermal paste or even liquid metal on the die of the system between the die and the IHS only. You cannot install liquid metal on the top side of the IHS because the heat sink is aluminum based and it will destroy your heat sink. But you can use liquid metal on the surface of the processors, the die, the chip itself. Since our IHS again is a copper nickel based metal if you want liquid metal check out the links in the description box and you can use the coupon code youtube for a discount but to install liquid metal you are going to have to take some precautions like covering up the components on the gpu chip as shown in this video here since liquid metal is conductive it can easily short out these components that i'm covering 
So you can use electrical tape or polyamide tape, which we also sell on our website. Links in the description box. And you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. And don't forget that all the materials we use in this video from the FastTech Pro Auto Kit, which we use to disassemble this system, to the IHS removal kit, to the tape that's being used right now, we sell it all at FastTechStore.com or FastTech.ca. So go ahead and show your support. If you enjoy our videos, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. To watch the full video of the system that we use today, make sure to stay tuned to our channel because we are going to be releasing this video in the near future. But for the meantime, since this was a requested video by a lot of you, you wanted to learn how to remove the IHS, I figured I'd release this early. So as always, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech, and I'll see you in the next one.